what is the pH of a buffer, and it's telling you the molarity of the acetic acid and the sodium acetate. So we have an acid and its conjugate base. What's the pH? Oh, it's the second question. Of 100 milliliters of the buffer after you've added some hydroxide to it. So there's two separate questions. They've given us that the pKa of acetic acid is the 4.75. And we can say, oh, we need to use Henderson-Hasselbach on this because we can see that it is a buffer and Henderson-Hasselbach works great for buffers. So we'll just start by doing that. We have to identify which is the acid and which is the base, which in this case is not too difficult. The acid is the acetic acid and the conjugate base is the sodium acetate. So we can just start answering this by saying pH equals the pKa, which we know is 4.75, and adding to that the logarithm of the base over the acid, base concentration, acid concentration. That's going to be 4.75 plus the logarithm of the base, the base was the 0.375 over the 0.225 for the acid, which means it's gonna be 4.75 plus 0.22, and we will get 4.97 for that. So that was our first question. The second question, they ask about the pH of 100 milliliters of the buffer after we've added 10 milliliters of hydroxide to it. So now we have to stop and think, well, what is it we were doing? We had acetic acid in water. And it was in an equilibrium. and acetate ion. Okay, what happens when I add the hydroxide to this? Well, the hydroxide is already a one-way trip to forming sodium ions and hydroxide ions, right? These hydroxide ions are going to combine with the uh, ammonia, uh, hydronium ions. And I know that when they do that, they're going to form, you know, it's an equilibrium, but it's kind of unequal. For the most part, they're just going to become water molecules. And that will remove hydronium ions. So I am talking about a situation where I am using this up. I'm withdrawing it from the system. And then Le Chatelier says, oh, that's a change to the system. I'm going to react to that by saying, oh, I don't want that number to go down. I am going to shift everything to the right to try to produce more of this because you're using it up. At that point, I can start thinking of this in terms of a rice table. Don't worry, we're not gonna use it for the whole thing. We're using it to understand what's going on. So here is my uh, acetic acid and my water in an equilibrium. So over on the other side, then we have hydronium ions and the acetate ion, okay? If we are trying to figure out what the initial is, we would have to start saying, well, what did these begin at? Well, the acid was the 0.225, and I could sit there and say moles if I would like, but let's, let's move on and, and say to ourselves, this is approximately zero. Why is it approximately zero? I know that 
what the, the pKa is. This would be almost the same as saying the, that the Ka was 10 to the negative fifth. And yet these numbers that I'm putting in here don't support a 10 to the negative fifth. This must be quite small because if I'm doing the Ka, it would be this times this over that, right? So this would be about 10 to the negative fifth, which doesn't even fit in the significant figures for this. So I'm okay in saying approximately zero right now because I'm just going with initial conditions and I'm going to be really stressing it by adding this uh, sodium hydroxide. So it's much more important what the change is than what this is to start with. I'm gonna to try to figure out what it is at the end. That's the important thing, right? And I would know that this would try to create more this would go up and this would also end up going up because when this falls apart, you get both of those, right? Now here is the interesting part. I'm continuing to use this up. I use it up because I'm adding that sodium hydroxide to it. All right, so I'm gonna have to be thinking about what that means. Meanwhile, I could write what these are. 225 minus x, this is x plus 0.375. And I'm just using this to sort of set this up. I'm, I, you know, I'm like, I'm not quite sure what I'm putting here right now, but I have an idea of what is happening now. I'm using this rice table to clarify what I'm going to do with Henderson Hasselbach. I know that X is this amount that is being used. It's going to be used to neutralize the NaOH. Okay, so X has to be the amount of acetic acid that dissociates to neutralize, oops, might want to spell the whole word, neutralize the NaOH. Oh, well then that means I know exactly how much of it needs to fall apart because I know how much NaOH I had. I had 10 milliliters of the 0.318 molar. Okay, 10 milliliters of 0.318. 318 molar, that's moles per liter, right? I will end up saying then that X would have to be 0 0.00318 moles. That I know. Oh, should I have used these numbers then? This was helping me set up. But if I'm trying to work with this in moles, then I should be worried about moles and not molarity up here. Oh, oh dear. So if I look at that and I say, well, if I'm worried about moles instead of molarity, I, am, I do care how many milliliters there are. This is not a full liter. It's a 10th of a liter. So all of these numbers are going to be changed. I am going to say that it's 0 0.0225 moles of my acid. And it's going to be 0 0.0375 moles of my conjugate base. What should I do with that then? I said that X was how much was dissociated to neutralize. I've came up with this number of moles. What, what did I say that that meant? Oh, it's how much dissociates. So I'll be subtracting this minus the 0.00318. Oh, we got our fun there. 0.00318. 
0.0193 moles in whatever the volume is now. The volume is different than it was. And over here, well, this was a plus x, right? So I will be adding to this the 0 0.00318 moles. And because of sig figs, I'll end up with this number of moles. That's the number of moles, but what's the volume now? The volume used to be 0 0.100 liters. I've changed that from the 100 milliliters. But I just got through adding another 10 milliliters of liquid, right? So I'm gonna be adding this, and in terms of liters, I now know that this is my new volume. One question is, do I care though? Because if I was doing the molarities and I use Henderson Hasselbach, they're in the same liquid. So the volumes end up canceling and I can do Henderson Hasselbach just using the moles. Yes, this is an interesting side note, but I don't actually need it for Henderson Hasselbach. All right, so what I've just said is that I'm going to use, even though it isn't strictly accurate, I'm going to use the 0 0.0193 moles when I talk about acid. And when I talk about base, I'm going to end up using 0 0.0407 moles, even though it's not really a concentration because they are in the same beaker. So it, the volume would just cancel out. Then I can just go ahead and put the numbers in to Henderson Hasselbach. pH 4.75 plus the logarithm of base over acid so the 0 0.0407 over the 0 0.0193. That's going to be adding 0 0.32, and I would end up with 5.07 as my new pH. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because it was an acidic solution. I added some hydroxide to it, we should make it more basic. This is a more basic number than that was. So it makes sense. And now if we just go back here to the screen, then we can look and see what we end up with for concentrations. And if we did the work of changing these, using what the volume was into concentrations, and we went through this process, we would end up getting exactly the same answer. And you might want to try that yourself just to prove it so that you believe the fact that you won't have to worry about this volume because it is a, a nice time saver. The other thing I'd like you to do is to go back and look at the sample exercise 16.6. .6. And you need to make sure you understand why that particular problem was different than this one. And it is because that problem has carbon dioxide gas, which escapes, okay? So that's what you should be looking for when you try that problem.